have um, Michael Rittevoit, is that right? Rittevoit Hansen, and he is an author and he is going to dazzle you. So please pay attention, come and sit down and enjoy. Oh my god. Just put no water on this. Hi people. It's my first uh, public speech ever. So I hope you'll do it right. Anyway, the beginning was good. When I presented my book to my first client today, I made her cry. <laughs> anyway, the title of my book is called The Message. And I wrote it years ago. And this is my experience, personal experience, with the company system. I was born as uh, Mihai Rikivoy in uh, Romania. And Romania was given by the big powers at the end of the Second World as a sphere of influence to the Soviet Union. Of course, for Soviet Union, sphere of influence means a virtual colony. So they installed a communist country in Romania despite their promise in the peace agreement to have a uh, democratic election when the people freely choose which system they want to live in, communism or capitalism. And uh, the Soviet Union created a parallel government in Romania the traditional government was left to rust somewhere and everything was operated to so the new communist government which was appointed by Moscow. So they promised everything to everybody and created even a couple of, uh, they made a couple of decisions which were very popular at the time and they were certain that they will win the election with a big majority. The election takes place and they lost with a big majority. And over 70% of the country voted for one of the traditional communist, uh, traditional capitalist parties, not for the communists. So the communist leaders were confused. What do we do now? So what they did, they got into an airplane and flew straight to Moscow and asked Stalin, what do we do now? And Stalin said, go back home, burn all the ballots, because the vote is secret afterwards, and declare the Communist Party winner with over 70% of the votes. And this is how Romania became communist against public desire. So, I was uh, born at the end of the Second World War. It was still war time when I was born. And uh, I was schooled in communism. I learned Marxism from A to Z. And after school, I still went through yearly political indoctrination is supposed to. Now, if I love to, but if I wouldn't, I would have all kinds of obstacles in my professional development. So I went through, what the heck. Anyway, I became a dentist in Romania. I became very successful professionally. I loved my, my people, my clients. I love everybody. And everybody loved me. It was a beautiful setup, truly. In Romania, we didn't have mortgages. So people privately lend me money. And I bought a house. Privately means no receipts, not nothing, no interest, nothing. It says, well, when you have your pay back. All right? And I did pay them back up to the last penny. But uh, I became a chief of the service, I said, and I was writing down the supply for the whole area, 
the water supply, and the supply decreased every single year to the extent we didn't have even enough silver fillings, for God's sake. We are not talking about composite, not talking about gold, not talking about porcelain, implants or anything else. Just simple, basic things, plastic, everything was plastic. And even that's supposed to be imported from the communist country, not from the West. So all my ambitions, I was involved in dental research, I did my own personal research, I invented new, personal, new surgical procedures. And uh, but then I figured out that my life is over. I was 30 years old. I achieved everything I could achieve. It was nothing more to be achieved. The communist system is uh, a political system where the Catholic government claim to represent the people. If they represent the majority, they are not responsible to anybody else. If you don't agree with them, you don't agree with the majority, you create chaos and you are marginalized. Marginalized doesn't mean kill or imprisoned, it means you don't go anywhere. So, at that point, it was an international conjunction with the President Carter claim human rights. Everybody on the face of the earth has human rights. The borders of the Second World War was not decided legally. So, the President Carter and his successor said, well, you know, we recognize the borders the way they are right now. We saw the border extend westward anyway, across Romania, Poland, and Baltic countries and so on. We recognize those borders. But I want all the communist countries to accept human rights in their own countries. President of Romania got into legs and said, Romania is the most democratic country on the face of the earth to begin with. There's nothing else that we can give you. End of the story. So, part of Romania became a permanent part of the Soviet Union, which now is the so-called independent Republic of Moldova, which is part of Moldova proper of Romania. And it stays independent because the Soviet army is sits, stand, it's, uh, uh, anchored over there. It has a base in, in Moldova. And nobody could go and do anything without them taking out the guns and starting to shoot. So Romanians said, well, okay, 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 we stay there, leave us alone. So Moldova is independent right now. It's a small country, only two and a half million people. What country is that? Small country, it's a province of Romania province. So I found, huh? What I look at against communism? All members of my families are coming from a simple country, uneducated people. One uncle was taking care of the family flocks on the hills over there, grazing around, until he got an idea that he should go to school. He was already 11 years old. He never went one year to school, one day. So he went back home and said, well, I want to go to school. And the father said, are you crazy? You want to go there? I cut your hair. And took a hatchet, brought him to the shed, and said, you want to go to school? And he said, yeah. And the mother said, OK, you will go. And he went to. He filled a bag with all type of cheeses and mop pollen and whatever they had over there to hold him for the whole week and headed to the next village across the hills where it was an elementary school. All right. So he graduated two years and one year and so forth and finished with everybody else right in time. When he finished the school, the Romania had an offer from France. Send us a Peruvian student and we give you a free scholarship to Sorbonne. 
in my own tacos. Yes, I am the one. He passed the test. It was great. When he passed the oral test, we told the commission, laughing the head off, because he was speaking French the way he was written, word to word, the way he knows Romanian is. He didn't know the combination of letters create a new sound. But they understand that he is highly determined. They understood that he is intelligent, that he knows what he is doing, and he gave him the leadership, they gave him the scholarship, he went to Sorbonne, and came out of Sorbonne as a philosopher. The Romanian government made him an inspector in the religious department of the government. And then the communism game came, and because he belonged to the, this particular department, he was downgraded to a priest in a small church of the historical, 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 historical treasure with no parishion at all. This was one. Not to mention his personal library was checked several times by the police and clean up all the books which are not really correct to French, to God say. Another uncle, straight from the village, connected to the nature, became a civic engineer. And he was very focused, very effective, became professor in university, university professor, and he got the opportunity to get a doctor degree in Germany, in Munich. And the government, it was just before the communists came, let him go. He came back a doctor in his own field, in his own field university professor. So, one day when he was in the forest with a forest ranger marking trees for a school project, he trusted that man because of the fellow nature-oriented person. And he says, what? And the agreement he said, the Russians, they really strip our forest of trees. They really take more than they should. It was only he and the ranger in the forest. The ranger reported him and the government fired him. Now, Romanian students were all sad, they couldn't say a peep. But the foreign students who came over there just because of him went to their embassies and said, if you remove our best professor, there's no reason for us to stay in this country any longer, we go back home. And the government put him back in place, never recognized his doctor degree, but he was back in his place. Another uncle, he was an orphan, raised by a family. And he became a writer, and he drew the attention of some prominent writers in Romania, and he became the private secretary of one of the Romanian political leaders. Communism came, and they made him a um, school teacher for the rest of his life, who never published anything. Another, uh, he was an orphan also, but he managed to finish the law school, became an attorney, it was successful. The communism came and they made him an uh, industrial worker, machine worker. Why? Because he was too intelligent, too independent thinking. In communism you say to think like the group. You think outside, you are out, you are out, you are outside. So he was retired as a factory worker. 
my father, I take another one. Oh, well, my aunt. She became a pharmacist, got a small pharmacy, a very small one. No employees at all, only she herself in a small place. One day, one of the government came with a stone face, stopped in and said, leave the keys on the counter, take your personal belonging and get out. This pharmacy is nationalized, belongs to the government, belongs to the people, the glorious communist people of this country. All right. Shaking her in her boots, she got out, scared to death, came back to my mother, and I was there to see them. Nobody told me anything, but I witnessed those things. I witnessed everything I'm telling you. Nobody explained them to me, but they didn't have to. I was old enough to understand. So, my father.